Somebody make some noise. I got a little help. Trisha Green, won't you tell them how you feel about it? Say
Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for the Lord is good all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. Well, good morning, beloved. I am Cliff Matthews, the very proud pastor of the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, located at 1600 Norris Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I want to say thank you again for joining us as we celebrate and give thanks unto our Lord. If you are a first time worshiper with us, we want to say thank you for joining us. We are honored by your presence and hope that something which is said or done may help you along your journey. Having said that, we want you to register your presence with us by simply putting in the comment section on Facebook Live, you see it there, yes, that you are a first time worshiper, visitor, uh, or hey y'all, first time, whatever you want to say. And if that happens, St. Luke, give them a great big St. Luke welcome. Get to know them and encourage them to continue worshiping with us. If you are a regular worshiper with us, we want to say thank you for giving us your time week after week. Uh, that means a lot to me, a lot to us. And we are thankful for your presence and what you mean for us week after week. Well, you know how we do it. We begin by asking you now to go to Facebook and to share this link on your page and be an evangelist to invite someone to come and worship the Lord with you this morning. And we also want you to know that if something is said or done, you know how we do it at St. Luke. If we were worshiping together, we are a vocal church. Amen. If you hear something, see something, feel something, amen, we want you to use your thumbs up symbol or want you to use your heart symbol or another emoji to go ahead and let us know uh, that something has spoken to you. You may also write a comment uh, as we go throughout this service today. Well, beloved, it is the second Sunday of November. God has brought us safely through and we give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Whether you believe it or not, we are just about six weeks away from the end of 2020 and the start of a brand new year. God has been good to us, and for that we say thank you. Well, beloved, today I want to invite you to join me now in our call to worship. And you'll find that on your device. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Together, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. I want you to join us now as we together sing the great hymn of the church together as we continue giving thanks unto our God.
Amen. Leaning on God's everlasting arms. Yeah, we are thankful, thankful for that opportunity. At this time, beloved, I would like you to join me, with me please now as together we go before a holy and a just God and confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, rest in the promise of scripture. If we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And to that, we ought to all say, Amen. At this time, beloved, I invite you to join with me, please, in our scripture reading for this morning, found in the New Testament, the Gospel according to John, starting in the 28th verse. The Gospel according to John, chapter number 11, starting in the 28th verse, and I'm reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, where you will find these words. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she quickly got up and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she nailed at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, in whom we live and move and have our being, 
by whose strength and power we are able to worship you today. Come now and tabernacle by your spirit with us as we, your children, in our scattered reality, worship you as the church called the St. Luke. Dear God, we need you today. We need you to do what you have always done. Lean close, hear our prayers, and know our heart that we may not leave this time of worship without having been changed. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns and rules forever, one God for all eternity. Amen. of disappointing you so I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance especially today when my life is so cloudy guide me to do 
that's why I owe. I open up, open up my heart to you, to you. Oh, I just need one word, one word, one word. I open up my heart. Oh, oh, I just need one word, one word, one word, one word. I open, I open my to you, to you. You're the lover of my soul, heaven of my soul. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the St. Luke News Network. I'm MJ3, and these are your morning announcements for the month of November. We invite you back for virtual Bible study right here on Facebook Live. Bible study is held every Tuesday at noon right here on Facebook Live and is led by our very own senior pastor, Reverend Clifford Matthews Jr. It's an interactive time for you to enjoy the word and ask your questions. So make sure you come back right here for virtual Bible study, 12 noon on Tuesday. Oh, I just got a message. Ah. I just got a message. Did you? <laughs> it's because I'm a member in the know. Make sure that you stay in the know by texting the keyword K-N-O-W to the number that you see on the screen, and that will make you a member in the know. Members in the know is the way that we connect and keep in touch with all of our members, our visitors, and our friends to keep you aware of everything that's happening here at St. Luke. And as we continue to navigate the COVID-19 atmosphere and reality, we definitely wanna make sure that we stay in touch with you through these cold winter months. So again, sign up. All you have to do right now, you're on your phone anyway, is text the keyword K-N-O-W to the number that you see on the screen and make sure you stay in the know. It's time for us to celebrate our birthdays, our celebrations, and all of our special occasions that happen in the of November. So happy birthday, November babies, including me. That's right. So shout out to all my fellow folks that are having their birthdays in this month. Go ahead and take time right now in the comment section and tell us if you are celebrating a birthday in the month of November or a wedding anniversary or any other special event. Happy birthday, happy special event from your friends and family at St. Luke. I'm gonna send it over to Minister DJ Boyd for additional notices and announcements. As we forementioned maybe about two months ago, we were gonna get new neighbors and they are officially here, moved in and ready to serve the community. So let us welcome the Michael Jordan Family Medical Clinic. The reason for the, the location here on Statesville Avenue and Freedom Drive is we wanted to have a permanent presence uh, within our communities. That presence, we wanted to ensure not just that we connected with uh, the, the healthcare services that we could provide, but we, have, we were afforded an opportunity to actually engage with the community. So it was intentional on our part that we didn't just have a one and done. It had to be a continuous conversation where we earned the respect and the trust of the community to share with us what they believe their needs were and for us to honor uh, those asks that they made. The community has said to us that we need a permanent presence. They wanted to have a medical home, not just somewhere that they visited when they had you know, an accident or uh, something along those lines, but somewhere where they had authentic connectivity to the physicians uh, that existed here. That was uh, one of the highest. They also said to us that we need someone who will hear us, hear what our, our challenges are. We clearly have uh, optics into things like the community health needs assessment that gives us uh, insight, data insight on what the communities need. But no community is like any other community. They're all unique. 
But in this corridor, it was important to us that we weren't just a health care provider, but that we were a collaborator. We are looking to create health equity, and the way to bring health equity to a community is to listen to what it is that they aspire uh, to have, and then for us to be the partner to, that delivers that for them. Thanks, DJ. Before I go, I wanna make sure we give a special shout out to all of our first time visitors. If you're visiting with us for the first time, make sure that you write in our comment section and let us know where you are visiting from and that this is your first time here worshiping with us virtually at St. Luke. And before you go, make sure that you give us a like right here on Facebook. Also, go over to our YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash St. Luke CLT. There you can find a replay of all of our services and of course the latest edition of the St. Luke News Network. Well, that's it this Sunday. We'll see you next week. Well, a man. You've heard the announcements that were before you. Before I get into my pastoral observations, I, I do want to say thanks for hanging in here with us. And I hope that you are indeed having church where you are because it feels like church up in here right now. Amen. And know that uh, we are thankful that you have tarried with us this long. And we ask you to hang in there for there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Well, beloved, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness and your stewardship when it comes to exercising your birthright. Uh, we are thankful for the outcome of the national election. Uh, we are thankful. I am uh, knowing that there are still some legal things that uh, the current occupant is trying to do. Uh, but uh, I am thankful that the numbers are in uh, for the most part and that we are going to welcome in a new president in just a few more months. Amen. And we thank God for that and thank you for your faithfulness and exercising your birthright. Uh, you have made a huge difference. There's work to be done now, make no mistake. Too many of us still don't value it, but we have to work on that. And we have to work here in North Carolina uh, to make sure that we continue the pathway towards justice uh, that is indeed the legacy we want to leave. Amen. So thanks again for that. I want to also say that we are still in the midst of the COVID pandemic, and uh, we are watching and witnessing in ever-increasing numbers uh, the impact of that right here in our own uh, city in our own uh, county. Uh, this is serious, you all. So I need for you all to practice um, social distancing. Uh, under here is my mask that I wear, uh, one of many that I have, and uh, make sure you wash your hands regularly. And now is not the time. I want to encourage you. Uh, this past week on uh, Wednesday, I went and had my flu shot. And I want to encourage you, ma'am, sir, please get your flu shot. I'm not bothering nobody, but uh, somebody I saw on their Facebook, uh, I'm not bothering nobody, you know, uh, but they mentioned, you know, uh, I'm not going to call their name, uh, you know, but y'all, I, 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 you know, but they mentioned they had a flu shot and now they were sniffles, and they had sniffles, right? Uh, no, 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 you go get your flu shot. You need it now, right? And take care of yourself and your family and make sure, especially if you are a senior or you have underlining health issues, make sure that you get your flu shot ASAP. Amen. Uh, we are thankful uh, for all that is being done here at St. Luke because of you. We're thankful for the continued outreach that St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church is having. And we are thankful that on next week, the th third Sunday in November, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed to have worshiping with us uh, for the first time since the pandemic. Our youth 
are going to lead us in praise and worship. Amen. We thank God for their presence and thank God in advance for what they're going to render and help us through. Well, beloved, thanks again for this time. Thanks again for your faithfulness. Thanks again for making sure that you don't forget that St. Luke matters. Yeah, St. Luke matters. Yeah, uh, that's important for you to remember that St. Luke matters. Don't let uh, yourself believe that because we're not gathered in this physical building, that we are not doing the work that our Lord has called us to do. We are doing it every single day and God is getting the glory, the honor, and the praise. So thank you for not forgetting that St. Luke matters. Uh, I feel led, I I'm gonna get in trouble now, but it's all right. Could you just put that in the comment section real quick? Could you just put St. Luke matters? Could you, or you could put SLNBC matters. Uh, you can be fancy. Hashtag SLNBC matters. Just do that now. Come on, come, come on now. Come on. You can do that. Your church matters. Don't forget that. And you help us week after week make a difference. And God is pleased with that. Well, God bless you. Thank you. And may heaven continue to smile on you. At this time, we get ready for church and prayer. I've been reminded this week of the statement I heard my ancestors say, it is no secret what God can do. What God has done for others, God can do for you. Beloved, I believe that prayer works. I believe that God can move mountains. And I believe that your prayer and faith can turn things around. So, beloved, I want us now to get ready to go to the throne of grace where we'll find mercy and find strength for our journey. As we gather for worship, if you are invited now to place in the comment section your prayer concerns, and we'll lift those up to God. Uh, we ask you this morning to remember the family of Roosevelt Welch. Uh, he lost his nephew on this past week. Uh, lift that family in prayer and continue to uh, call uh, their, his name, Roosevelt's family's name, before God. Be in prayer for those we know in our sick and shut-in list. Be in prayer for those we know need a special touch. Don't forget our seasoned saints. Be in prayer for them. Uh, pray that God will continue to bless them and touch them in the midst of all they have to go through. Be in prayer for those who are recovering from illness, those who have a testimony that God brought them up. Uh, be in prayer for those we know who have loved ones who are suffering and, so, and trying to survive COVID. Uh, be in prayer for them. Be in prayer for other things besides the pandemic, uh, that God will show God's self real in the midst of it all. Well, we're going to be led now in a praise or in a song to help Till the soil for prayer. And after this song is sung, I'll come back. And together we'll go to God's throne of grace and mercy. Thank you, God.
reaches to me. Help me sing it. You are God in prayer. And dear kind and merciful Heavenly Father, it is once more and again that we have gathered together in the act of worship to call upon your holy and your righteous name. Dear God, there's so much that is upon our hearts today, so much that has us concerned. But dear God, before we ask we just want to begin by acknowledging first of all that you are still God that you are God all by yourself and we owe you praise not because of what you've done but because of who you are and we praise you for your character for your nature for being God we also want to say before we ask thank you Thank you for new mercies we see every single day. Thank you for how you have blessed us on last week. Thank you for how you've kept us. Thank you for how you've opened doors and made a way. Thank you for every morning we can get up and know where we are. We are clothed in our right mind. Dear God, thank you for a roof over our head, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, thank you for walking with us through all that we have faced, stuff that others may not even know and can never understand. But we give you thanks. And dear God, if you never do another thing for us, we could spend the rest of our days thanking you for what you've already done. We thank you most importantly today for the gift of your son, Christ Jesus, who gave his life that we may have life, a divine example of what love looks like. Help us to love like Christ, help us to walk like Christ, and help us to embody Jesus wherever we go. Now, dear God, you've heard the prayer request. You're wise enough to see the prayer request lifted via Facebook. And you know the intent and desires of our hearts. So, dear God, we thank you right now that you're already on the scene working things out. You're already moving on our behalf. You're already fighting battles and opening doors and fixing things according to your will. But even more importantly, God, we thank you that you're giving us strength to stand just a little while longer. Believing that at the end you will show up and you will make a way. Dear God, we ask your blessing now upon all those connected to the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church. Have your way. Bless them. Keep them safe from every hurt, harm, and danger. 
May your name be a covering over the house and the children and grandchildren that they may see your glory in the midst of all that we're going through. This is the prayer we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all who believe in that great name said, Amen.
my hands in total praise. Amen. Woo. The Lord is good, isn't he? Hmm. Amen. Well, beloved, I want to continue our three-part sermon series uh, taken from the book of Job in the Hebrew Bible around the general theme, the attitude of thanksgiving. I want to encourage us to develop and have the habit of being a thankful people. Not just once a year around Thanksgiving time, but every time we wake up in the morning, I pray that we develop the discipline of giving God thanks and so that we become more thankful as we encounter various things in this world. Beloved, we owe him a thanks. And we thank God for your presence with us today. Last week, we looked at chapter 1. We talked about how, Lord, I owe you a thanks. And today, we're going to go back to chapter 1, but we're going to look down a little lower in the chapter. And we're going to marry that text with the one read earlier out of John chapter number 11. We're going to zero in on that 32nd verse. Beloved, I want us to begin today reading our scripture, and then we'll go to God in prayer. I'm reading from Job chapter 1, starting in verse number 20, and then I want to go and quickly go over to the gospel according to John chapter number 32, uh, chapter number 11, verse 32. Job chapter 1, starting in verse 20. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 32. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Today I want to preach for a little while from the subject, sustaining thankfulness, sustaining thankfulness. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, where I am, you brought me. What I know, you taught me. What I have, you gave me. And what I am, Lord, you made me. Lord, I am depending on you can't do nothing until you come. This is your servant's prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Sustaining thankfulness. Sustaining thankfulness. Beloved, I want to be the first to say that I understand that we live in a context where often what we know we should do 
is not always what we do. That we live in a world that we cannot control. A world where we cannot regulate both nature and somebody else's behavior. Therefore, whether you accept it or not, every day we are alive, we have agreed to some level of vulnerability. There's only so much we can control and to be honest, beloved, most of what we can control is what is us. We can't make folk do right. We can't stop the winds from blowing. We can't make folk put down a weapon. We can't make individuals change their habits. We cannot regulate when the sun rises and the moon sets. We may think we can, but we can't tell the hurricane where it needs to go. We go to work every day. And if you ever really sat down and began to think this thing over, just by leaving your house, getting out of your vehicle, walking into your office building, you have exposed yourself to a level of vulnerability. There's only so much that we can change. And in our world, the reality of it is, the older you get, the more you begin to realize that there is so, so little that we actually can control. So I understand that it's easy to talk about what we ought to do. But life makes it hard to pull that off. Preach, boy. We all understand, any of us with some level of religion, some connection to the Christian faith, some understanding of the greatness of our God and our Savior, we know that we ought to be thankful all the time. Hmm. We know that thankfulness is really what ought to come up out of us. Not just in word, but also in affect and in mood, if I can use clinical terminology. In other words, before we even open our mouths, somebody ought to look at us and see on our faces a spirit of thankfulness. Yeah, that's how it ought to be. Folk ought to be drawn to us in the midst of a world that is evil sometimes by what they see before we ever open our mouths. We know we ought to be more thankful. Thankful for a new day, thankful for a job, thankful for a car, thankful for a roof over our heads, thankful for a dime in the bank or a penny we just found, thankful. We know we ought to be. But then life shows up and life has a tendency, preach boy, to make it hard for us to be the thankful people we know we are called to be. Y'all better say amen somebody. Yeah, life shows up. So you begin your day, you make up your mind, you say to yourself, self, I'm going to be more thankful from this day forward. And you leave your house and get to that job and your supervisor or your manager says something to you and thankfulness is the last thing on your mind. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, you say, Lord, I'm going to be more thankful. And you feel good. You feel great about yourself. You go for a physical. Think nothing of it. 
do some routine blood work and the blood work comes back not good. Yeah, you decide to be more thankful, to put thankfulness or to make thanks full in you. And you look up, your happy home has been torn apart. COVID is wrecking havoc in the land. The country seems to be divided more than ever. Folk are acting like they have no sense. And beloved, believe it or not, the desire to be thankful, even the steps that were taken to be thankful, too often cannot be sustained. Too often our intent, preach boy, to stay thankful gives way to a broken pattern of thankfulness that doesn't do us a whole lot of good and it rarely helps somebody else. So I've come today out of this book of Job as the foundational text to tell you I believe that the book of the Job, that Job chapter 1, tells us how we can have sustained thankfulness. Yeah, in the midst of all that is taken, in the midst of life gone crazy, in the midst of the unexpected that won't leave because we prayed away Job's narrative. The text in Job today gives us a way, the only way I know to sustain thankfulness. Yeah, what I'm saying is Job gives us a way that no matter what we go through, there's always a thankful spirit. Be clear, Pastor. I'm not saying that Job teaches us how to always be happy. No, happiness is not necessarily a theological concept. I'm not saying that Job teaches us or shows us how to go around always with a smile on your face. No, sometimes you are thankful, but you're not smiling. Amen, somebody. And sometimes the smile is really showing folk how scared you really are. Yeah, I'm saying, not saying that. I am saying how that Job shows us how no matter what comes our way, the stuff we can't control, no matter what it is, Job shows us how to sustain thankfulness. And beloved, I want you to get this message today because we're in the midst right now of a global pandemic that has no respect for person or respect for your religious preferences. It doesn't care who you are, where you live, what you drive, what you have, it shows up. And when it's done, it's, it has completed what it is, was assigned to do. And there's sometimes very little that you can do about it. Yeah, but even in the midst of all of that, in the midst of the pain of living, Job chapter 1 gives us our text today how to sustain thankfulness. Our text, chapter 1, verse 20 picks up shortly after Job got word that everything he had, his property and his children, were gone in perhaps a matter of hours. Job, now, full of grief, full of pain that life can too often bring, 
Job begins the grieving process. If I had time, beloved, I want to make it plain that grief is a good thing. But I want to tell you that even in grief, there can be some thankfulness. I don't mean shallow, superficial thankfulness. I don't mean the kind of thankfulness that holy rollers, rollers show up at your home when someone has passed and tell you how you ought to act. No, I don't mean that superficial kind of thanksgiving. But I mean deep thankfulness that comes from a place way down in our souls as deep calleth unto deep. Yeah, there's a way to do it. Job is grieving, but Job still has a measure of thanks. So Job, now, what would he do? If you were to hear this narrative for the first time and you never heard it before and you closed your eyes and you began to listen well to the narrative read by someone else, would you think what's about to happen would be what you thought would come? He just lost everything. Everything is gone. Money, property, wealth, children, and then it says, Job got up. Look what it said. Tore his robe. Shaved his head. And fell on the ground. Stop right there. Yeah. Can we be honest? That's more about what we would expect to hear. Job got up, tore his clothes. Job started mourning. Job started having this prolonged period of grief. Job, maybe we would have understood if Job would have got up and shaved his head, tore his clothes, fell on the ground and tried to hurt himself. Maybe we would have understood if Job got up, tore his clothes, shaved his head, fell on the ground and started cussing like a sailor. Maybe we would understand it if Job got up, tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground, and started eating dirt. But that's not what Job did. Job rose, tore his robe, shaved his head in an ancient act of grief and mourning. He fell to the ground. He didn't pass out. He didn't fall backwards. He didn't faint under the stress of the pressure of grief. Job fell to the ground and Job began to worship. Oh, y'all missed that. Yeah, Job, Job fell to the ground. It was an act of intentionality. I can't show y'all here, but Job got himself up, tore his clothes, shaved his head, entered a period of mourning, and then Job, stood upright and started bowing down to the ground, knee bent, and touched the ground with his lips as one does often in Middle Eastern culture. Job deliberately and intentionally fell to the ground not because sorrow pushed him there, but he fell to the ground because Job made up his mind that now that I have lost everything, now that everything I used to have is gone, huh, now that I have to deal with the loss of what made me wealthy, 
and deal with the grieving of those families of the servants who died. Now that I have to prepare to bury my children who died under the rubble of the house, now that all of that is before me, there's only one thing left to do. It is not to give up. Preach, boy. It is not to throw in the towel. Talk now. It is not to call it quits. But it is to get up, bow down towards the ground. And when you're down there, go on and worship the Lord. I've come to tell you. If you really want to sustain thankfulness in the midst of all that you go through, the only thing I know that can sustain thankfulness is the act of worship. But let me be clear what worship is not. Worship is not choreographed, scripted service to God. No. Worship is not forced on you by anybody. Worship is not what you're told to do at a certain time. And like a robot or a puppet controlled by somebody else, you raise a hand because you're told to raise hands. Or you run because you are told to run. No, that's not worship. That's just having some fun, I guess. Real worship. Doesn't need a script. Real worship doesn't need anyone to tell you how to do it. All real worship needs, real worship, all it needs is for somebody to know for themselves that when everything else I have is gone, there is a God that still is in charge. The only thing that you need to really have worship. You don't need a big building. You don't need to have a choir. You don't need to have a whole lot of props. But all you need to do is to remember that in the midst of all you're going through, preach boy, that God is still worthy of your worship. I want to tell you, now, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. That when life has showed up, when it's knocked on your door and opened it before you gave it permission, when life has showed up and walked through your world and did what it wanted to do and looked you in the face while it did it and dared you to say anything to it while life showed up and altered your landscape and change your topography when life showed up. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, preach boy. You turned to the God that brought you a mighty long way and you started right where you were to worship God for yourself. If you want to have sustained thankfulness, the only way to sustain it is you've got to learn how to worship God. Yeah. Pastor, what does our text, what, 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 does, what does worship, how, how does worship help us sustain our thankfulness? I'm glad you asked. Look at the text. Notice, get this now, that Job, Job, he started by getting up. The text now, he tore his clothes, shaved his head, bowed down, and started worshiping. Notice this now. Notice this now. Notice this now. This is the first word we heard from Job in the whole story so far. Preach, boy. The first word we hear from Job will come in a few moments. He got up, tore his clothes, shaved his head, and started worshiping. What, 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 why, why, how does it worship? Sustain our thankfulness. Well, look what Job said after he worshiped. The words that Job says next did not come before he worshiped, but they only came out of his mouth because he worshiped. The first thing I want to tell you is 
that when you worship, your thankfulness is sustained because worship gives you a new, look what it says now, it gives you a new perspective. Notice what Job said, naked. I came in the world and naked shall I leave. Job worshiped. And when Job worshiped God, Job got a brand new perspective. Job understood that life is life. That things happen. That bad things happen to good people. Job did not begin by thinking, what's wrong with me? In fact, Job maintained throughout this story that I am innocent, I did no wrong. Job worshipped. And when Job worshipped, Job got a fresh or a new perspective on his situation. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? When you were going through your struggles and you made up your mind that you were going to worship God anyway. Do I have a witness here that God showed up and when you worshiped God, that God gave you a new perspective? Preach, boy. God let you know that what you went through, that there's a purpose and a plan behind it. When you dare to worship God and really bow before God and open yourself up to the holy, God knows how to give you a perspective that the world can't give you and will sometimes never understand. I want to suggest to you, beloved, that if you saw Job this day and you saw what Job did on this day and you knew the story that Job had gone through on this day, you probably would have looked at Job and scratched your head and thought that Job was crazy. But Job had already understood because he had lived long enough to know that every time I bow my face to the ground and every time I worship my God, God has a way of showing up and giving me a new perspective on the stuff I'm going through. That's why some of y'all didn't give up. That's why some of y'all kept on pressing your way. That's why some of y'all didn't lose your mind. That's why you're still here in the land of the living. Because when you bow down to the ground and begin to worship your God, God gave us a brand new perspective. Yeah, and that perspective helps us to sustain our thankfulness. But secondly, not only does worship help us sustain thankfulness by giving us a new perspective, get this now, but now worship helps us understand the cycle of life. Look at the text. The text tells us, he said, naked, <laughs> I came in the world naked. Shall I leave? But look now what he said. He said, the Lord gives, the Lord gave, the Lord takes away. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's what he said. He said, I've discovered after I worshiped that I got a new perspective. I understand now that life is life. I came in the world. I had nothing. And I'll leave the world with nothing. But then he said, look what he said next. He said, then he said, but look what he said. He said, I shall return there. He said, but now I understand the Lord has given. And the Lord takes away. He sees now in the worship this cycle that is sewn into the very fabric of the universe by God's, God's self. It is this principle that in life you are always either at some point in the cycle, that at some point you are on the side or in the cycle what it looks like things are being taken away. But if you hang in there long enough, you will get into the cycle what it looks like 
everything is being given to you. Y'all better help me preach now. That, 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 yeah, that you understand how it works. That, that, that when life shows up and, and things are taken from me, I, I understand that the same God that took it away is the same God that can give it back again. The same God that let me go through is the same God that will bring me through. The same God that let me cry is the same God that will put a smile on my face. The same God that saw me on my worst day is the same God that will be there when I celebrate my come up. I've come to tell you that when you worship God in the midst of all you're going through, you can sustain your thankfulness by understanding that when life shows up and takes away, that's not the end of the story. When life shows up and takes away, you just need to wait on the Lord because God has a way of bringing things around. Somebody out there right now ought to be typing amen because you've lived long enough now to have seen stuff happen in your life. But do I have a witness out there? You know for yourself that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away you know how the cycle works. So when you see things taken away, you don't fall apart because you worship him. And worship lets you know that there is going to come a season where you shall receive. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you sustain thankfulness? Well, I tell you how you do it. You worship. What is worship? How does worship help you sustain thankfulness? Well, first of all, it gives you a new perspective. Secondly, it, it shows you the cycle that God uses. And lastly, it helps you to understand when you get that new perspective, when you understand how things work, when you know that when I'm losing, I'm only getting set up for my giving, that when something leaves, it's only a setup for what's already on the way. That's when you then decide, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. The text tells us Job got up, he tore his clothes, he shaved his head, he bowed to the ground, and he started worshiping God. And he said, naked I came into the world, naked I shall return, new perspective. He began to identify and worship the cycle of give and take. And now lastly, Job decides that because he worships, that no matter what he's lost, that the Lord is still worthy of a blessing. He said, but I will still, what he said, he says, he's come, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to tell you that when you understand who God is, and you allow yourself to worship in the midst of all you're going through. Your thankfulness can be sustained because you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to bless the Lord no matter what you've gone through. I don't mean no cheekish bless the Lord, but from the bottom of your soul, you're able to say, I still bless the Lord. You don't give up because life showed up. You don't give up because you lost some stuff. You don't give up because you understand that when I lose, I'm only being set up to receive. That's why you've got to worship the Lord. Because when you bless the Lord, when you dare to worship the Lord, you are at the right place at the right time. I know that's the case. Because over in John chapter 11, we have the story of a family, a brother and two sisters. The brother's name was Lazarus, and his sister's name were Mary and Martha. The Bible tells us that one day Lazarus got sick, and the sister sent a courier to tell Jesus, come on now, Lazarus is sick. But Jesus got 
the memo. But Jesus took his time. I want to tell you, sometimes, beloved, the Lord takes his time because he's only setting you up for a real miracle. Well, when, when he took his time, we find out that Lazarus had died. Now Jesus shows up what looks like too late. And when Jesus showed up, Martha meets him. And Jesus and Martha have a conversation. And Martha is talking theological. She's talking that churchified talk. Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection and the life. But Martha, but Martha really is still caught up in her Sunday school lesson. She's talking real fancy church talk now. But not so with Mary. Mary had another ideal. Jesus goes out. He gets up and gets ready to go out. Mary gets up and Mary comes out to meet the Lord. Mary comes out. The crowds go with her. And the first thing that Mary does when she gets to Jesus, are y'all there? Reminds me of what Job did in the midst of his own grief. When Mary shows up, she's not having no church talk. She does tell him if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But before she even opened up her mouth, Mary did just what Job did. Mary came to the presence of Jesus and she bended her knee and she bowed towards the ground. She stretched out before the Savior. She bowed at his feet and she right there went into an act of worship. I want to tell you when Mary started worshiping the Lord, the same power that sustained Job is the same power that sustained her. And before the story is over, the same brother who she lost was the same brother that she got back. Because didn't Job tell us, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But if he takes away, hang on in there. Your giving is just around the corner. I've come to encourage somebody. Go on and worship the Lord. Go on and bow down before him. Go on and tell him that he's worthy. Go on and stretch out before him. Go ahead and let him know I bless your name at all times. Not just in church but on my job, in my car, at my desk, in the park. I'll bless the Lord at all times. And when you bless him like that, when you dare to do that, you will find a thankfulness that can't go away. Come hell or high water, you will show up and tell folk I'm yet thankful. You will open your mouth early in the morning when you get out of your bed and tell the Lord, Lord, I'm still thankful. Do I have a witness here that when you worship, it sustains thankfulness? For my time is up. I thank you for yours. I've lived long enough to know there's so much I can't change. But Whatever comes my way, I've learned how to bow my knee, place my face towards the ground. I'm talking metaphor now. I've learned how to humble myself, and I've learned how to have worship. I've been through some stuff. In the words of the old hymn, I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dash. Trying to come my soul. I've been through some stuff. You've been through some stuff. I did. Bow down. Worship. Call on it. Get a new perspective. See the cycle of give and take. Bless him. And just like Mom, Mary. Before long, your loss 
but turn to a game. Your, your taking season, your stuff is snatched, but give way to a press down, shaken together, running over, and you just push. preach, boy. Somebody needs to hear this today. It's not over yet. The Lord is calling you to worship. He's got you. Humble yourself. Oh God. Woo. Let him have his way. Tell him how worthy he is. And watch God sustain your thankfulness. They'll look at you funny. They'll wonder how you're still thankful. But tell them because I've learned how to sustain my thankfulness through worship. Dear God, I pray now for everybody under the sound of my voice. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. work. I've seen it work. I've seen it work. I've tried this for myself. It works. I dare you to worship. I dare you to call on him in the midst of all. I dare you to lift him up. It works. you have ways to bless the God who's been so good to you by blessing God's work. You have a chance, beloved, to go ahead and use our different digital apps, Cash App, PayPal. You're able to use those to make your tithe and offering to St. Luke. God knows St. Luke is fertile ground. It's good soil to sow into. I want to challenge you, if you are a worshiper, to 
today, make sure that you use one of those apps and place your tithe and offering in the storehouse to allow St. Luke to continue to do what St. Luke has been called to do, even in the midst of this. Beloved, we want to encourage you, if you've never tried the tithe, never tried it yet, try it. Trust him. Watch God show you that God can be trusted. Pastor, what's the tithe? The tenth. If you made a dollar last week, give God a dime. You made a hundred, give God ten. You made two, give God twenty. And watch God. Bless you. As only God can. Yeah. And if you would like to love, you could always call Mr. Jarvis Miller, our church administrator, 864-684-8773. You call him, he'll let you use your debit or credit card as you would if we were here in church over our safe and secure network. And he will take that, receive it. Your information is never stored, never shared. And it is secure. And he'll take that card and he'll do the amount you want, and he will receipt you for your gift. Or if you like, you can always mail your tithe and offering in to St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, 1600 Norris Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 1600 Norris, N-O-R-R-I-S Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28206. And if you would like, you're welcome to come by the church if you're not too far away or want to take a Sunday drive. Just come on by the church and you'll see on the side, by the parking lot on the side entrance, you'll see a mailbox receptacle that is attached to the uh, building. Only Mr. Miller has a key to that. When he comes in on tomorrow, he will take that, uh, he'll uh, account for it, and he'll receive it and send that to you. Thanks again for all that you do. Thank you for allowing us to be a blessing, not only in Charlotte, but throughout this world, through our various partnerships with the American Baptist Churches USA. God loves you, and so do I. Sustaining thankfulness by worship. God loves you, and so do I. Now, it's time for our closing benediction. And now, God, let your servants depart in peace according to your word, for our eyes have seen your salvation a life of the world, and the glory of your church. This is our prayer. And all God's children said amen. Listen, God loves you, and so do I. Stay safe, mask up, social distancing. Trust God. God is good. Worship him.